Well, good morning and welcome to Worship Online for this Sunday, September the 4th, the Labor Day weekend here. And uh, we are so glad that you were joining us. We wish you could join us in person, but we're glad that you're around um, and joining us. May we truly be able to worship the Lord today. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kanai, Pakani, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nations, Region 3, and all people who make their homes on the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We also reaffirm our pledge to stand for justice and our commitment that our church is a place where all people, regardless of race, culture, sexuality, or faith, are welcome. Together we hope that all can find the true love of God. Let us pray. And so we come this morning, O oh Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Touch us, we pray, and may we leave changed and a little more like you, Jesus, as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you ever seen one of these? In 1880, British mathematician John Venn created what is now eponymously known as the Venn Diagram. Venn was trying to demonstrate how two seemingly opposing concepts can actually be closely linked together. We know that the most significant impact that ordinary churchgoers have on helping shape local communities is through their daily work, because that's where they spend the majority of their time each week. God has called them to live out their faith in and through their work. They are Christ's disciples following him in the marketplace. Work as God intends, however, is not only defined as paid employment. People of all ages engage in meaningful work in their homes, yards, schools, and communities. Sadly, these ordinary churchgoers have been receiving confusing messages that God's work is what's being done in the church. Sometimes churches just see business people as a way to fulfill their budget obligations. This has left many people feeling like second-class citizens in God's kingdom, sometimes feeling diminished for choosing what has been labeled as secular work versus the sacred work of the church. We are excited to launch Venture. It's an important new work on behalf of CBM and our local church partners here in Canada and around the world. We would like to ask you to do just two things right now. First, would you allow us to stay in touch by signing up for our e-newsletter, In The Loop? Each month, we will provide you with curated content that will help you to expand your knowledge and reshape your ideas around faith and work. Second, would you connect with us through our social media channels? You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular updates and insights to what is happening through Venture. We're also expanding our network through LinkedIn. There you can connect with us and become part of the Venture Network. May you know God's calling in your work and may your work be as worship. Yeah. Welcome to Venture, Faith Meets Work. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Then God said, Let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So our service today is going to be a little bit different. 
Our friends at Canadian Baptist Ministries, of whom we are privileged to be a part, have put together various responsive readings, prayers, um, and whatnot for uh, Labor Day. And so we're just going to take advantage of using those and let those speak to us. There are also a couple of responsive readings that we're going to read and um, that your um, line will be on the screen for you to say as we read them together. So our first um, so our first responsive reading is um, together. The response in each situation is for these and all good things we give thanks. Let us read together. Let us give thanks to God for all the good things of life. For the world in which we live and the universe beyond it. For these and all good things we give thanks. Let us give thanks for those who through the ages have pioneered along new paths of thought and knowledge, opening human minds and new adventures of truth. For these and all good things we give thanks. Let us give thanks for the heritage of our common life, for wise government and good laws, for education, art, science, and technology, and all of their benefits to us. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for the comforts and pleasures of life, for our homes, our friends, for goodwill, and the companionship for the help, sympathy, and advice of those who are wiser than ourselves. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for these, this community, for what we owe to industry and to the commercial life of Calgary and all who have helped to build it. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for those on whose work we depend for the necessities of life. All those engaged in industry, whether manufacturing goods or providing service and in commerce. For these and all good things, let us give thanks. Let us give thanks for all those scientists and doctors who research and devote work, devoted work have bettered the health of the human race. And those who today in hospitals and laboratories fight for free to free us from disease. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for all who have helped lighten the load of drudgery at work and at home and who have enriched the possibilities of our leisure time. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Let us give thanks for men and women of all ages who have worked to improve the quality of human life. For these and all good things, we give thanks. Thanks. God of heaven and earth, we pray for your kingdom to come, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Teach us to see our vocations and occupations as woven into your work in the world this week. For mothers at home who care for children, for those whose labor forms our common life in this city, the nation, and the world. For those who serve the marketplace of ideas and commerce. For those whose creative gifts nourish us all. For those whose callings take them into the academy. For those who long for employment that satisfies their souls and serves you. For each one we pray. Asking for your great mercy. Give us eyes to see that 
our work is holy to you, O Lord. Even as our worship this day is holy to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we come to the uh, what is called the procession of symbols. Unfortunately, I don't have all the symbols for you, but I am going to try and show you the pictures along the way as we go. And there is a responsive part that I hope you can say. Let us do this uh, very prayerfully. Oh Lord, we offer you this picture of sheaves as wheat as a symbol of all that you provide for us from the fields, water, and soil. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in this world through farming. Worker God, we celebrate the work of farmers as done unto the Lord, and we give you thanks. O Lord, we offer you this symbol of a briefcase as a symbol of all that you provide for us in factories, offices, shops, and places of services. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in this world through business. Worker God, we celebrate the work of business people as for the Lord and give you thanks. O Lord, we offer you this picture of this hammer as a symbol of all that you provide for us through the work of trades professionals. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in this world through trades such as construction, plumbing, electrical, and mechanics. Worker God, we celebrate the work of tradespeople as for the Lord and give you thanks. Worker God, O oh Lord, we offer you this stethoscope as a symbol of all that you provide for us through hospitals, clinics, health care centers, pharmacies, and in-home care providers. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in this world through the caring professions of nurses, doctors, pharmacists, and other health care professionals. Worker God, we celebrate the work of healthcare professionals as for the Lord, and we give you thanks. O oh Lord, we offer you this picture of a gavel as a symbol of all that you provide for us through government and the legal and judicial system. Thank you for the work of politicians, judges, lawyers, police officers, and the other government and legal professionals. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in our in your work in this world through politics and law. Worker God, we celebrate the work of politicians and legal professionals as for the Lord and give you thanks. O oh Lord, we offer you this picture of textbooks as a symbol of all that you provide for us through our education system. Thank you for the work of teachers and professors, administrators, educational assistants, janitors, maintenance workers, and bus drivers. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in this world through education. Worker God, we celebrate the work of educators, administrators, and support personnel as for the Lord and give you thanks. O oh Lord, we offer you this symbol of job postings as a symbol for all those who are searching for work. There are many in our community who are facing financial hardship and in need of steady work. Thank you for the social systems that provide assistance for individuals and families during these times. Help us to be a supportive community for those facing economic hardship. Worker God, thank you for being our provider and sustainer in times of hardship and job searching. In the searching, may people find opportunities to participate in your redemptive work in the world. And Lord, we offer you this picture of laundry as a symbol of all you provide for us during the work of homemaking. 
Thank you for the work of all those who do household chores, shop for groceries, prepare meals, take care of children, pay bills, mow lawns, and fold laundry. This work matters to you and contributes to healthy families and community life. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work in the world through homemaking. Worker God, we celebrate the work of homemaking and caring for children as for the Lord and give you thanks. Colossians 3, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Smith and I work at CBM. When Heather and I lived in the south of France, the month of August was the unofficial mois de congé, or vacation month. Factories shut down production, workers took the full four weeks off, people flocked to the Riviera using crowded highways in order to suntan on really busy beaches, and then wait for long in long lines at tables at a crowded restaurant just to flee the stress of work. Unlike the song of Ella Fitzgerald, I love Paris in the springtime, we loved I love Paris in August because you can park for free, be quickly served in a cafe, and never wait in long lines. All because the French love to get away from work in August. But today and for the following two weeks, we are praying for work, or more specifically, for work, workers, and the workplace. We are image bearers of God. We are His creation. We are made for work. In the very first chapters of Genesis and before the fall, we read that God blessed Adam and Eve and he said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the earth. So today, we thank God for work, for paid work and unpaid work, from the most meaning, menial to the most meaningful for the chance to be part of stewarding his creation. Here are five specific prayer requests I'd like to leave you. First of all, thank God that around the globe, many of God's people are invested in caring for and cultivating the earth as farmers and gardeners, growing food which they can share with their families, their neighbors, and local communities. Pray that the weather and the soil conditions would not hinder, but would actually help their labor. Number two, pray for those you know who are currently without paid employment. Maybe they don't have a job, maybe they're too ill to work, others have been injured on unsafe work sites. And pray for those people who promote workplace safety. Pray for someone you know today, by name, who is looking for work. Number three, pray for tradespeople in Bolivia, Cuba, in India, and in China, in the Philippines, and everywhere where CBM's partners are active, that they would earn fair and equitable wages, wages, and that they would see their work as unto the Lord, as it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Number four, pray for the CBM staff around the world and here in Canada who are able to work. God has blessed us with the great gift of work. It's life-giving for us. Pray that we would be faithful stewards of the gifts that he has given us. And fifthly, pray for the people in your church and local community who are actually able to enjoy vacation, rest, or Sabbath from their work. Pray that they would gain from this time away a renewed perspective on the meaning of work and the expression of faithfulness to God and the world through their labor. Thank you and God bless. The second reading comes from Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to 8, and verses 17 to 20. Then the king commanded his palace master, Ashpenaz, to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion 
of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years, so that at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. Among them were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. The palace master gave them other names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine. So he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of literature and wisdom. Daniel also had insight into all visions and dreams. At the end of the time that the king had set for them to be brought in, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke with them, and among them all no one was found to compare with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they were stationed in the king's court. In every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Hi, I'm Brenda Hulk, and I work with Canadian Baptist Ministries. At other times in my life, I have worked in education, in business, at home, I've been a mother and a homemaker, I have worked as a caregiver, as a volunteer, and I love to work in my garden where even the simplest tasks like watering or weeding remind me that we are called to work, to be co-creators with God. In Genesis 1, God calls us to care for his creation and to manage it. Verse 28 reads, Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and the animals that scurry along the ground. God invites us to work in his creation so that humans will thrive, grow, and flourish. Today, we pray for workers, whether paid or unpaid. We pray for those employed, for those in search of employment, those who work in dark, unsafe, or unjust conditions, those on the front line of a pandemic, and those whose work brings us hope, comfort, and refreshment in a weary world. We all work. Work is often hard, but it is good, for when work is done for the Lord with faith, hope, and love, God delights in our work. Please see the prayer points listed below and pray with me today for all workers. May the work of our hands and heads and hearts reflect God in all we do. Our second responsive reading together. O Lord God Almighty, we offer you thanks for the chance to work, for the benefits of working life, for the opportunity to create and add value, to improve the quality of life by meeting the needs of others. O Lord, accept our thanks. Accept our heartfelt thanks. We are thankful for those occasions of solid achievement, for the ability to produce, for the opportunity to serve other needs and to change our methods of work. O oh Lord, accept our thanks. Accept our heartfelt thanks. We are grateful for previous generations who laid the foundations of our society for the facilities that educate and train us for the future and for all those who care for our present welfare. O oh Lord, accept our thanks, accept our heartfelt thanks. We have relished the chances to deepen our relationships with colleagues at work, to welcome newcomers, to be open to all and to present at meetings. O oh Lord, accept our thanks, accept our heartfelt thanks. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Michael Waddell and I work with CBM. Over the past couple of weeks during Prayer Line, my colleagues Terry Smith and Brenda Hulk uh, have invited you to be praying for all things work, or to be more specific, for work and for workers. Today I want to continue with this theme and invite you to be praying for workplaces. 
I'm here in my brother Jeff's uh, warehouse and as you can see behind me uh, he sells windows and doors for the residential housing market and as you might expect he is in full swing right now as homeowners and contractors are taking full advantage of the summer months to get their building projects completed. So as I'm here in this workplace representative of workplaces uh, all over the globe I'd like to invite you to pray for places of work around the world and here in Canada. Workplaces in all their uh, many sizes and forms provide people with space to do work, producing products and providing services that contribute uh, to the flourishing of individuals and families and communities. We're thankful today for people of faith who uh, enter workplaces, whether a physical location like this place or out in the field, uh, as business owners, as employees, as contract workers, as clients and customers, attentive to the fact that in that place of work, they can participate in God's redeeming work for all creation. Below are a few uh, prayer points to guide you this week as you pray. Thanks and God bless. I want to offer our thanks to the various people within the Canadian Baptist Ministries who work with all of the workers and workplaces and help to uh, remind us that where we work is our mission field. And uh, thank you for your prayers and scriptures today. We are grateful and our benediction. Lord, as we go to our homes and our work this coming week, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open our ears to hear what you are saying to us in the things that happen to us and in the people we meet. Open our eyes to see the needs of people around us. Open our hands to do our work well, to help when help is needed. Open our lips to tell others the good news of Jesus and bring comfort happiness, and laughter to other people. Open our minds to discover new truth about you and the world. Open our hearts to love you and our neighbours as you have loved us in Jesus. Amen.